everybody, what's going on? I'm the Tim Eister and welcome back once again to Dunswell International Airport, where in this episode, I will be completing the airport's cargo area over here on this flat plateau. So we're gonna conclude that today. This unfortunately is gonna be the last episode featuring the airport DLC before moving on to some other things. So it's been a pleasure. It's been a super fun project, but it's not done yet. Because there's one thing that I left hanging last episode that I'm going to have to get into before starting anything else. And that is the airport's airline. So drum roll, please. Now, last episode, I got you guys to choose a name for the airline that will reside in Dunswell. So this is the paint scheme right here on the 747. We have a dark green and orange and white paint scheme. I really like this airline livery. If this was real, this would be a sick looking airline. But anyways, the name of this airline, um, it was originally Chirp Air by default. And of course, I didn't really like that name very much. And I asked you guys to pick a name and I have chosen a winner. So your suggestions for the most part, guys, were super clever. A lot of them were really funny. But the one that I liked the most and which will become the official name of the airline was chosen by Denny Duchan. And he has contributed a ton of suggestions before. So thanks so much. For contributing once again the official name is tim i stare <laughs> i laughed so hard when i saw that name that's super funny i love it um so yeah thanks denny again for submitting a suggestion for the airline congratulations your name is uh, now the official airline of dunswell so thanks so much anyway without further ado let's jump right into the cargo section which I am noticing a problem right away. The cargo section is on this side of the runway, but by default, not using any mods, it's impossible to create any taxiway intersections in the middle of a runway. The only option would be to have an intersection over here. But as you can see, our bridge is pretty much making that impossible. But thankfully, I am playing with the, well, I'm playing with a few mods, which will allow us to make that possible. So what I'll do is I'm going to have to make a return taxiway over to the cargo area. So what I'm going to do is just cross the runway like so. Super simple. The, the, the taxiway simply crosses the runway. There's no intersection or anything like that. Unfortunately, the byproduct of this is there's going to be planes crossing the runway while planes are just barreling down the runway, uh, which is not ideal, but in this case, we have no choice. So you can see that it's doing this weird texture glitch here. Super simple fix. Take your taxiway node that's closest to the runway. You just move it, move it down one, and then the runway overlaps it removing that weird texture glitch. So super simple fix. And we're going to go ahead with that. You know, the airport is pretty chaotic as it is. Why not just add a, a touch more of chaosness by crossing a taxiway onto the runway, which we know that planes are just going to ignore completely. But it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna have this main taxiway going all the way over here to the very edge of the runway. Just like so. So now planes can land, turn left, go around right, right here, turn left again, and then go to the cargo terminal. So it's a win-win, it's perfect. Okay, now I'm going to have to play around a bit with the cargo area. So I played around with it off camera a little bit just to get, you know, used to how it works and whatnot. But it is kind of kind of tricky here. So first of all, we have a cargo airport terminal, which is rather large. And it is kind of weird because um, I had to place it down and study how this would fit into the airport. So basically, I'll show you guys real quick. This is... I guess the public facing side of the terminal where cars would just go or, or trucks would drop off the goods and then they would pop out on the other side and then get loaded onto planes. So with the cargo airport DLC, you get these large cargo airport roads and medium cargo airport roads, which you can just lay down and wherever you want it to go. So these roads 
what they're meant to be is is kind of on the airport side of things so you know this would be like uh like on the taxiways and stuff interacting with the airplanes so i'm going to remove this and the first thing i'm going to do is place down some cargo aircraft stands oh crap they have to be roadside oh yeah okay what i'll do to contour that is Let's do this. I'm going to lay down a cargo airport road. And I'm going to ballpark this. Actually, I think it was the smaller roads that were connecting to that building. The cargo terminal. So if I take this road and I just kind of lay it out here. And then take my cargo terminal. And then link this together. I think it's going to be a bit too far out. I'm going to have to bring it in a bit. And I think I'm going to bring it over this way, too. So I'm going to remove that. Connect this up. That is definitely better. But I'm thinking... You know what? Actually, yeah, let's try this out. Actually, I might back it outwards a little bit. Because I have to put these, um, these pads here. Or whatever they're called. What are they called? Air... Cargo aircraft stands. This is what the official name of these are. If I place down some cargo stands, and then I want to have my taxiway. Yeah, no, that's going to be weird. I'm going to have to back up the terminal a bit. All right. I'm going to put it back where it was. So we're going to have a small cargo airport road. We'll connect up the terminal to it. It's kind of leaning outside of the airport zone, but that's okay. We'll mess around with the terrain as we see fit afterwards. Okay, and then I will place some stands. And I'm going to space them out every... Every four blocks. Oh, crap. Every three blocks. I think that'll yield the best results. Honestly, I think five stands is probably more than enough. Because in this cargo area is not only going to be the cargo airport, but I want there to be other factories as well. So a few episodes ago, I mentioned that we had a bunch of warehouse looking factories. This would be an ideal spot for them. Just so it blends well into the airport. All right, so let me remove these roads. I might actually add another large road over here just for looks basically right here a little too far there i just wanted it to be equal with this one although i don't think it is but whatever it's okay all right, so then let's add a second taxiway that branches off from this one. And that connects up to, oh crap, well I guess I made this too far then. And there we have it, just like that. So let me go back into my airport roads. There we are. And with a touch of the surface painter, fix most of the texture glitches, but nothing that can't be fixed without the, um, without some shrubbery. 
All right, well, that's pretty much as simple as it gets as far as the cargo terminal goes. Uh, the next thing I can place down is a train station. However, the train station, I may place it... I'm going to have to flatten some more terrain here. There we go, and in addition to the cargo terminal, we also have a cargo train station, which I will lay down right, right here, I guess. This would kind of be like a cargo terminus, really. The rails won't go any farther than that, and it's pretty convenient that the train station is as wide as the cargo terminal, so this is perfect. And I like how there's two lanes, too. That'll make things a bit easier. So now the challenge becomes, how do we link this train track over to the main line that's going along the river here? We're gonna have to deal with the terrain and these bridges over here. I think the best solution honestly would be to, I am going to remove this section of road and then This section of track will branch off like this. Okay. And here what I'll have to do is modify the terrain. And this is actually a good thing because this entire chunk of land used to be flat. But now if I... If I drag this out a bit farther to like over here, make this all nice and flat and level, and then I am going to smooth this out as far as I can go. Oh crap, I don't want to touch the coastline. I think I, it doesn't look like I screwed it up that much. But yeah, I'm gonna smooth this out as much as I can. So now what this does is it creates an embankment on the side of the river. So it not only looks better as far as like a transition goes, it's actually a bit more realistic too. Cause you know, most of the time along rivers, you'll have these embankments, these hills that go up a ways and you don't have like a giant flat area, unless you're in Florida, of course. Florida is the exception over here. So let's curve this out a little sharper. And then we'll have a straightaway. Oh, look at that. We can pretty much just beeline this train track right to the station. Uh, it's kind of on a weird angle. Let me fix this. Maybe if I start it out from here and then turn. Yeah, that's perfect. And look at that. It's a nice, beautiful incline all the way to the station. Couldn't be better. Now what I'll do is bring this line as close as I can. And then maybe around this point, I'll connect it back up together. Just like so. As far as gradients go, I don't know how realistic this is. I don't know what the, the gradient limit is for rail. I know it's like maybe 2 or 3% or something like that. But anyways, this is like barely noticeable, so I'm going to keep it as it is. 
And now the final step is just to connect up this road again. And this may pose a bit of a challenge because oftentimes, actually maybe I can make the crossing right here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Oh yeah, that literally couldn't be any better. So it's not gonna screw up the the incline that much. Fantastic, look at that guys. That's great. The only thing in this configuration, uh, only trains coming from this rail line will be able to use this. So they'll have to back out and then go the other way. Unless of course, no, that probably wouldn't work. If I would have put the train station over here, then I would have, I could have created a loop. But I mean, I, I think it's fine. I think it's all right. Shouldn't matter that much. All right, so what I'll do now is I shall create the entrance for the inside part of this terminal. Now, I highly suggest that you go watch City Planner Plays tutorial on cargo areas because I really like his method of connecting up these cargo... Oh, wow, this is weird. <laughs> we have a curved building. I think I may just do a 90 here. Um, yeah, so in City Planner Plays tutorial on the cargo area, what he does is he goes into the... Uh, where is this now? Where would, oh yeah, this would be in roads. Toll booth. He puts down a toll booth to as a transition piece from the cargo terminal to the outside world. Because of course you don't want any, any vehicle driving up onto the tarmac and having access to the cargo planes and things like that. That would obviously not be very good. So what I'll do here is I'll place down a toll road right at the end here. So trucks will have to go through this toll in order to get out of the industrial park. So it not only looks better, it's a little bit more realistic, but in addition to that, it'll make us a little bit of money as well. And then from there, I'll provide a connection to the outside world. Oh yeah, and this is one thing that was bugging me as well. This hill here. So normally you don't find massive hills directly in line with a runway. So what I'll do here is I'll lower this road to about the same height of the runway, at least in front of the runway. And let's go into our landscaping tools and flatten out all of this. And I'm also gonna remove some trees as well. Normally some trees are not sought after in sight of a runway or in line of a runway, I should say. Over here as well, I'm gonna remove these trees. Oh yeah, over here needs a bit of work as well as far as terraforming goes, so let's take care of that. steep hill but that's normal a lot of airports you know you'll, you'll often find a huge amount of terraforming that has gone around to have the airports fit there we'll just fix this up and then off to the side here I don't know if there's gonna be anything like this huge empty chunk of land here. I don't know if I'll just have trees or if I should have anything built here. I don't know, maybe some homes have like a nice neighborhood kind of crammed in here between the highway and the airport. I don't know, just an idea. All right, well, 
that uh, pretty much does it for the industry area of the airport. There's not a whole lot of options as far as that goes. Not a ton of building choices, but we're not done with the industrial section just yet. I want to get into some factories because we have quite a few of them to go. First of which is a furniture factory, which is quite large. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to switch over to industrial roads and let's, let's have a road going out this way. Oh crap, yeah, that's right. This whole build might be a bit weird because of the terrain. I'm gonna disable straight slope. So at least we have this bit of flat terrain. And so let's have our first factory. Right here, furniture factory. Now along with the factories, I'm gonna place down a whole bunch of storage units too, just to make sure we have enough room for whatever products these factories need. So the furniture factory requires plain timber and paper. So this is solely reliant on the forestry industry. So let's place down two warehouses. First of which we shall fill with plain timber and this smaller one here, paper. I think that was it, right? Paper and plain timber. Yep, perfect. And then right beside the factory, I'm going to place down a couple of... Oh crap, let me move this over. Move it over by two. That should give us enough room for a couple of warehouse yards. And then we will balance this out with unique factory products. So the products that are being produced by this plant will just go in here ready to be exported. Okay. Might as well just place all the factories, right? We don't have a ton of them left. Although there may be some that might not look good in this area. The soft paper factory is absolutely massive, but this looks like something that may fit a little better on industrial island. So I may plow through an entire neighborhood here and then have this factory somewhere because it looks absolutely fantastic. I feel like it would look out of place over here because it's more like a dirty industry, you know, manufacturing plant rather than these giant warehouses. And man, is this a giant warehouse. Holy crap. What is this anyway? Okay, this is an electronics factory. And it requires plastics, glass, and metal. And because this plant is so huge, I am going to flatten some more terrain. So I'm going to flatten... You know, I might as well just follow the coastline somewhat. You know, a little something like this. And then I can go ahead and smooth it out. Now how that is done, because I'm using extra landscaping tools, it disables that feature so I don't have to purchase any soil. But the way it'll work now is without any mods, if I want to create a giant hill or a giant pit or something, I can purchase some soil to, to pile it on. I don't think maybe going down probably doesn't cost you any soil, but if you're building any sort of incline, then yeah, it, it'll cost you some some soil. All right, so I'll have a road going out this way. Let's go back into our factories. And then let's place down this mammoth of a factory. And then beside this factory, actually, I just want to double check here. Uh, do, do, do. The electronics factory has a production rate of 6,720 units per week. Freight truck count 10. So we're going to need a pretty large warehouse to support all of this because this has... No, maybe not. 400,000 capacity and this has 750,000. Let's go ahead and place down a large warehouse. And 
this large warehouse shall store the unique factory products. And of course, we're gonna need some storage units for every type of ingredient that are going to go into these products. So we'll just have some smaller warehouses. Let's have a medium one here. Now you don't necessarily have to do this, but I like to have one storage unit per ingredient or per resource that goes into a factory. So we'll have this one, I'll fill it with plastics. I'll have this one filled with glass, I think was, yep. And then the next one, we will fill it with metals, right? Plastics, glass, metals, there we go. And then we have our unique products that will be exported into here. Now, is this gonna be a huge logistical nightmare? Probably, there's probably gonna be so many trucks flying through here. I may have to make some adjustments to this whole thing eventually. But I don't know, we'll see how it operates. It might be okay. go at least I'm providing some decent highway access so everything that's being exported from here can just go down this road connect to the highway and vice versa I don't know we'll see if there's any upgrades that have to be done here I'm gonna leave some space between these buildings if I have to upgrade this to like a four-lane road or something I'll try to leave enough room so we don't have to destroy everything to upgrade what else do we have we have a printing press this just looking at it, it looks like a more historical building. It looks made of brick, and I don't think it would fit aesthetically into this area. It looks like something that would be closer to downtown or again in the industrial area. So I'm gonna never mind about that plant. The lemonade factory. Yeah, this is a unique one as well. This would look really good in a sort of agriculture area, but I don't know if I can fit this anywhere. I may have to squeeze it onto industrial island actually. I don't want to overload this area too much with too many factories either. So it looks like at this point, we have two other factories we can place down. One of which is the clothing factory, which is not too big. And then the modular house factory, which is absolutely massive. Oh my God, it's even bigger than the, uh, the food plant, the electronics plant. <laughs> what does this produce? 10,800 units per week. Oh my God, that's crazy. Okay, well, we're gonna have to make like a whole neighborhood just for this factory. It won't even fit in the back here. You know what? I think this factory might end up... Oh yeah, there's a huge open space over here. I could probably place it. I may do that. All right, well, I hope you guys really like the car factory. I, I, I can't get over how awesome this looks. It looks like it's part of the airport. You know, look at like Toronto Pearson or something, for example, and then you have exactly this kind of stuff in between the terminals and the runways. It just looks awesome. You know, I don't like to brag too much, but that's one thing that I pulled off that I'm really proud of. All right, so last but not least for this area, we're gonna place down this clothing factory, which produces 6,400 units per week. So this is a pretty small factory. It shouldn't produce a ton of traffic. But where do we place this one down? I think I'm gonna place it. I think I'm gonna place it over here. Yeah, I'm gonna place it down here. And as far as storage options, as far as storage options, we'll have a medium warehouse. 
that will store the animal products. Animal products, and then we need some crops. And then plastics. storage for crops? I guess not. Alright, well let's have uh, zoned industry farming products. I don't know if, if crops will be stored in there. I don't know if that counts as farming products. But we don't actually have a storage option for crops. Because crops are stored in, uh, in these grain silos here. And cattle sheds. No, that converts crops into animal products. So they're stored in barns as well. So we may have to rely... This factory here is probably going to have to rely on the farms that are right here. So this is, this is a good scenario here. Because the farms aren't that far. So I'll actually switch this over to plastics. As far as crops go, this factory will just rely on the nearby farms. So I don't think that should be a big problem. All right. You know what? There's a big empty space here, too. But crossing these rail lines, I don't know. That's going to kind of be a pain. Probably. I don't know. I, I feel like there should be stuff over here. But that's it's purely aesthetic. It doesn't really matter. this into an industrial road and I think over here I may just have like a generic warehouse along with some smaller warehouses just you know kind of as an aesthetic really that's the main reason why I'm placing these down here but it also looks cool win-win it also serves a purpose as well uh, let's see here uh, we can use this area just for general storage too So what I'll do here is I'll just have this balanced. We will have... Why not just like some generic storage? So forestry and farming products. Ore products. Might as well. You can never have too much storage. Some unique factory products. And then... Uh, some more unique factory products and then over here we'll set this uh, we'll keep that balanced and uh, some more forestry products there oh man that looks awesome look at that let's check our power here okay we don't have any power yet and I don't think we can place anything that would bridge power from this side to over there so I'm just gonna run a power line across the water And we will connect everything up. There you go. All right, so let's hit play. And oh crap, of course, we're going to have to provide some water to this place.
I can't wait to see just how much of a traffic nightmare this area is going to be, guys. It might not be too bad. Oh crap, that's true, that's out of limits. Well, there you have it. We have a now fully functional cargo area. We may have to work a little bit on the aesthetics, just placing down some trees and getting things organized. But overall, I mean, this is, this is totally functional. Here we got some trucks spawning. Doesn't this look like a true industrial zone? Oh my god, guys. It's pretty massive, though. <laughs> like, zooming out and looking at the entire city, it looks pretty massive. Okay, well, that is pretty much going to cut it for this episode, guys. I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes detailing as far as, like, the fence goes. I'm going to fence this area in, maybe add a couple trees here and there. Just make the area look a little bit more tidy. After that... Uh, we're going to wrap up this episode, and that'll be it. So I will say, though, guys, um, there's been a lot of concern about the abandonment and the giant death wave that's swooping through the city. As you can see here, you know, we had dropped down at one point to like 62 or 63,000 people. We are on our way back up in population. You can see that we now have some residential demand. As a test the other night, I let the simulation play out all night. And then I checked on the city the next morning and everything was back to normal. So, like I said, I'm, I'm thinking there's been some sort of population rebalance in the new patch that totally screwed up, you know, the, the amount of residents per neighborhood, per house maybe, or something like that. I don't know what it is. Uh, but I can assure you that given enough time, the city will return to normal. So after the airport is complete. I think I'm just going to let this whole death wave situation play itself out. And by next episode, the city should be back to normal. So guys, that's it. Let's get into the time lapse and then we'll get to the end of the episode. All right, guys, well, that just about concludes the episode, but stay tuned to the very end because there's going to be a couple of cinematics coming right up. Other than that, that also concludes the airport series, unfortunately, but I have to say I had a ton of fun with this airport DLC. This was really, it was really refreshing, you know, to get a brand new DLC in City Skylines. It's been a while, and yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to play it a little bit earlier than everybody else. Also, next episode, I'm not really sure what we'll get into. We'll have to browse over the city and see what needs to get done. I'm sure there's some services or something that we'll have to plop down somewheres. It's been a while since we haven't really checked up on the overall health of the city, just to go through all of the different metrics and to go through, uh, you know, maybe our, our status reports, our, our traffic status reports and different things. So maybe we can take some time to do that. So everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it just to run an overall health check on the city. Drop a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until the next episode, take care.